I guess firstly I'll introduce myself. My name is Danika. I work at the City of Bunbury as the Youth Officer um, in the Community Partnerships team. And with me today, I've got two lovely ladies from the waste team from the City of Bunbury. We've got Jo. Hi everyone. And Carmen. How are you going? <laughs> It will be a little bit more, more seam, seamless when we get started. Um, so yeah, we're lucky to have the two ladies here from Waste to give you a rundown um, on some trip, tip, trip, tips and tricks um, for waste management and zero waste cleaning. This is program four of the Life Hacks program. So the War on Waste Hacks is number four out of seven. So we are nearly half, just over halfway through the program. We're doing, we've got three more left. So if you are interested in attending any of the other, any of the other online sessions, make sure that you register as we'd love to see you at future events. Right, so just before we kick off the content, I just would like to do an acknowledgement to country. We acknowledge the traditional owners of this land, the Wadani Noongar people, and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Perfect. So a quick overview of what we're going to run through tonight. I'm going to hand it over to Jo in just a second, who's going to be talking about waste management. Um, I think she'll have very focused on like the free bins and things like that, which will be amazing. Then she'll hand over to Carmen, who will do zero waste cleaning. Um, so then there will be time at the end for questions. Like I said, you can pop in questions into the group chat at any time, um, <laughs> but you there will be time at the end. So Jo's actually going to stop um, the end of hers, ask for questions or ask for any clarification. And then, um, then we'll move over to Carmen and we'll do the same and you can ask questions at the end of her session as well. So that way then you can definitely make sure that you can pick their brains about all the things. I'm going to hand over to Jo now. Okay, hi everyone. Um, like Tanika said, I'm Jo. I'm one of the Waste Education Officers here at the City of Bunbury. And why is waste education important? Well, on average, each of us produce about two tonnes of waste every year, which is pretty crazy when you think about it. And that's a lot of waste that, um, you know, we have to work out what to do with. And in terms of Western Australia, we actually create more waste than people in other states and territories and dispose of the second highest amount of waste to landfill. And we're the second equal lowest recyclers, which is pretty scary statistics. But it's not all doom and gloom, because here at the City of Bunbury, recycling is the key for our city by the sea. Um, we're very lucky because we've got an organics bin, which we call our FOGO bin, which you can put food organics and garden organics into. We implemented that in 2013, and it took our um, diversion from landfill rate from 23% to where it's currently sitting at 61%, which means that we're the leaders in recycling in all of WA. Actually, um, some of the Perth um, councils are also looking at taking on the FOGO system. If you go up to Perth at the moment, you might find some of your friends and family have a green bin, but it's only for garden organics, which is fantastic, but it doesn't take you to the same percentages as what we do. The state government has recognised that and they've set targets that um, all councils in the Perth metropolitan area should be on FOGO by 2025. So what can we do to take it to the next level? Well, this is where the circular economy comes into it. So it's us as consumers making better choices so that we reduce the amount of waste we produce. So recycling is the first tip where we actually um, can use our waste to be made into new products. But it's also things like um, making choices in packaging so that the packaging we purchase is made of recycled material rather than things that can go to straight to landfill and also repairing and reusing. So in terms of recycling, an aluminium can is a really good example of this. It's one of the easiest things to recycle you simply need to put it into the recycling bin rather than the landfill bin. So it's pretty easy. An aluminium can is 100% recyclable, so it can get, and it can get recycled over and over again. And making a new can from aluminium only requires 5% of the energy needed to make a can from scratch. And it can actually be back on the shelf as a new product within 60 days. It's pretty amazing. So as a first step, just make sure you put all your aluminium cans into the um, recycling bin. 
So back to the circular economy, some of the things that we can do as consumers is look at our food waste. On average, Australian households throw away 2.5 million tonnes of edible food each year. That equates to 300 kilograms per person. The average Australian household sends roughly five kilos of food waste to landfill each week. But that's actually not for City of Bunbury because we've got our organics logo bin. So we can actually utilise that to recycle our organic waste. So we're really lucky here in the City of Bunbury. Like I said, we're leading the way. On average, each household also throws away just over $2,000 worth of food waste each year. It's $42 a week in food that's just going to waste, which is pretty crazy. Um, so Yak WA have developed some really cool um, information to help, our, um, to help us reduce our food waste. So some of the things that we can look at when we're actually buying our food at the shops is um, the best before dates and use by dates. So actually knowing a little bit about that can be really helpful. So a best before date is when the food should be eaten. Uh, it doesn't mean that it's going to go off. So you can probably go past a couple of days and it would still be okay. This is really particular for things like um, packaged goods, such as tacos, um, baked beans, those kind of things. But then with fresh food, they tend to have a use by date. So this is actually when the food's going to be expired. So it's not recommended to use the food after that date. The stores also have a sell by date. So that's when the store should actually be selling it. Um, and then that gives you some time to actually use it. So um, some tips on storing your food so it lasts longer is things like um, fruit and veg, if you store them in the crisper and the drawers, uh, in the drawers or in a sealed container, they last longer. So you have a longer opportunity to use them rather than having to sell, um, throw them out. Um, some other tips, particularly if you're moving out and you're going into a share house, is to have an allocated day where you cook. So you're only cooking one meal. It's going to save you a lot of money um, and a bit of time as well if you're not having to cook every night. Um, also, any leftover fruit and veg uh, any vegetables can actually be made into stock, which you can use at a later date. Um, and be creative with your excess food and leftovers. So if you make it like, such as a big curry, you can use it for lunch the next day. And one thing that I've had to learn over my time living out of home is to meal plan. It's amazing if you actually sit down before you go to the shops, plan your meals. You can save a lot of money and also a lot of food waste. So things like if you're saying purchasing sour cream to go on tacos, try and plan something else that you're going to use that sour cream for. Then you won't be throwing it out and you're spreading that cost over a couple of meals. Another thing you can do is avoid plastic packaging. Plastic is a lot harder to recycle. Um, soft plastics can't be recycled in our curbside bin. Hard plastics can. And um, we'll get to that later. But if you can pick, say, a cardboard package rather than a soft plastic, um, you can use that, that material, can, that paper or cardboard material can go into your FOGO bin or your recycling bin rather than the soft plastic that would have to go to landfill or back to the red cycle bin. Also, if you buy in bulk, you can also save a lot of money as well. Another thing is when you're looking at clothes, uh, if you look at the materials that um, the clothes are made from, so natural fibres will actually break down in landfill. It might take a bit of time, but they actually will break down. As a comparison, synthetic materials that are made from chemicals or plastics may actually take a lot longer to break down, could actually be up to 500 years, um, and that adds a lot of waste. Um, and a lot of people um, get a bit confused and think that they can put their, re, um, their old clothes into the recycling bin. Unfortunately, they're not recyclable in the curbside collection, but if they're still in good condition, maybe look at passing them to a friend or family member or donate them to a secondhand um, community store. And if they're in bad condition, say if they're damaged or stained, you look at actually cutting them up and um, using them for cleaning cloths or donating them to your local um, mechanic as racks. If they're things like towels or old sheets, you can actually um, donate them to 
um, animal shelters or vets. They're always looking for those material for the, the animals that they're caring for. And some other things that you can do is um, have a clothes swap party. A friend of mine organises one every year and it's a really good opportunity to switch clothes that are still in good condition. Um, you get to have a clean out of your wardrobe and pick up a few new items that are in still great condition. Um, and then afterwards, all of it is donated to um, a local women's shelter. It's also a lot of fun just to catch up with everyone. Also, if you look at the care instructions, so you can work out how to care for your um, clothing the best way you can, it's gonna make them last a lot longer. Another thing is looking at quality over quantity. I know I've done it sometimes, you see a bargain, an item of clothing that's really going really cheap, particularly like a cheap pair of jeans. Sometimes those um, jeans don't last long, so you end up having to buy multiple pairs when you could have actually just bought one good quality pair. So it's always good to buy quality or to actually take stock of what you've got. How many times do you go to buy a new jumper and you've actually got a really brand new one that you bought last season and completely forgot about? Or if you need something for a special event, see if you can borrow something from a friend. So we'll have a quick run through of our three different bins and see what you can and can't put into them. So this will help with the poll that we just went through. So like I said, we've got our FOGO bin, which stands for Food Organics, Garden Organics. So you can put actually a lot of your um, scrap foods in here. So everything from your fruit and veg to your fish, even breads and pasta, even cheese, bones, um, eggs, citrus. But a lot of people forget that you can actually put um, paper products in as well, such as baking paper, tissues or paper towel. And then as well as, you know, your food, uh, your garden organics. So, you know, your lawn clippings, um, even pet poo, um, branches and flowers and stuff like that. But some of the other things that you can put in that people often forget about is shredded paper. We actually prefer to this to go into the FOGO bin rather than the recycling because it's so small when it gets wet, it just clogs up and um, can contaminate other um, recyclables. Things like pizza boxes and takeaway containers, they generally have, um, if they're made of paper and cardboard, have oil staining or leftover food. It's actually better for them to go into the FOGO bin because if that oil, um, penetrates the paper, if it goes into the recycling bin, it can cause contamination to the paper stream. And we're also lucky here in the city of Bunbury that a lot of our cafes have gone compostable. So a coffee cup actually can't be recycled, like your average coffee cup can't be recycled in your FOGO bin or your recycling bin. It's basically because it looks like it's paper, but it has a plastic liner. Here in the city of Bunbury, a lot of the cafes actually have got a compostable cup that has a compostable liner in it. So it's actually made out of a cornstarch rather than plastic. You just have to look for the little seedling logo and it will also be written. I think some of them say made from plants, not plastic. And if the lid also says that it's compostable, it can go straight into your FOGO bin. Also bio cups can also go into your FOGO bin. Um, things like newspaper, um, any paper or cardboard, even things like magazines. So we actually prefer paper and cardboard to go into the FOGO bin rather than the recycling, because it can get, actually get contaminated by other materials um, and get wet in the recycling. Um, also, when you're going to buy a takeaway, if you buy from a cafe or restaurant that has paper-based um, packaging, you can actually throw that all into the FOGO bin as well as the leftover food afterwards. So all of this in this picture here can be put back into the paper and cardboard paper bag and thrown straight into the FOGO. Yeah. That way it's actually going to be um, composted, um, turned into a rich material, which is then sold to our farmers. Here at the City of Bunbury, um, we also provide kitchen caddies. So if you guys are interested, if you don't have one already at your house, uh, we'll send a link to the form where you can fill out and receive one for free. We'll actually drop it at your house. It also comes with the compostable bags 
So they're also made out of the plant starch and have um, the certified logo, which is called the seedling logo. A lot of people get confused because there are some biodegradable bags that are on the market. If they're biodegradable and not compostable, it means they're still made of plastic. They just break down a lot quicker than your average plastic bag. We provide the compostable bags free of charge from the admin building, the libraries and the Southwest Sports Centre. They'll come with your caddy, um, but yeah, you can get more anytime you like. This way you can keep the little caddy on your kitchen bench, put all your food scraps in, take it straight out to the FOGO bin. Now onto your recycling bin. 71% of people um, surveyed found that they're confident that they know what to put in their recycling bin. But 94% of people actually get one item wrong. So a lot of people are thinking they're confident, but there's probably just at least one item that they might be doing wrong. So we'll, we'll go through some things today and hopefully you guys will be 100%. So basically some of the key messages that we like to put out is um, keep it loose. So we want the recyclables not to be in a plastic bag or a box. Uh, we want them to be emptied and rinsed. So if you've got a Coke bottle, just take the lid out, off, empty it. If you're at home, give it a quick rinse and that's just to get any of the food or um, drink residue off. If you've got something a little bit more complicated like a peanut butter jar or a Vegemite jar or even a butter container, just you know, make sure you've got a majority of that food out. If you can't, say if it's a dog food tin and it's just too gross, <laughs> it's actually better to go into the landfill bin because that can actually contaminate other products. And if in doubt, let us know. Um, and we're always happy to help out. So some common mistakes that people make is soft plastics. Soft plastics like chip packets, um, Frozen vegetable packets, lolly wrappers actually can't be recycled in your curbside bin, but there is a program called Red Cycle at Coles and Woolworths that will take it. Um, we'll talk about that in the next couple of slides. Um, tissue and paper towel actually is too fibrous to be recycled, so they're better to go into the FOGO bin, as well as receipts and shredded paper. So they're too small to be recycled, so they should go into FOGO. Um, dirty items like we just discussed, um, lids should actually be removed. Uh, we did have a program for a while where we were recycling the lids. Unfortunately, that had to stop because um, Envision for Hands, who we were donating the lids to, has ceased to exist. So it's now best to put them into the landfill bin. They're basically too small for the optical sorters to pick them up in the recycling plant. I have a question about that. Yeah. So what if, if you don't remove your lid, will it mean that the item won't be recycled? Uh, possibly. Because basically what happens, all of the products go to a separator. They're then bailed and um, sold overseas. So the lid's often a different plastic to the bottle. Um, so a company will request a palette of say type one plastic, but what they're getting is type one and type two plastic. And that's not what they're asking for. So that's when they're sending it back to us. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit like if you ordered a pizza, and you ask for a vegetarian pizza and you got ham on it, you'd be sending it back because that's not what you asked for. Um, it's a, similar if you put a plastic straw back into your drink container, it's a different type of material. So the best thing that we can do to make sure our recyclables are actually recycled is to put them in, in good condition and singular. Um, it's also handy to remember that uh, when they do get to the separator, so first of all, what happens is all of the recyclables in the southwest are actually taken to Picton and then road train to Perth up to Suez and they're hand separated. So as you can see in this picture, it's actually someone's job to pick out all the wrong things that people have accidentally put in their bins. So that's really important not to put things like um, rotten food, nappies. They actually pick out 5,000 nappies at the separator alone every week from people putting them in the wrong bins. Um, also things like gas bottles, they can actually be hazardous, they can cause fires. Um, you might've heard that the clean away plant, which isn't the one that we use, caught fire last year. They haven't released what caused that fire, but it's likely to have been something hazardous that has been put accidentally into the recycling bin. 
Uh, also, we haven't had an incident here, but in Perth, they have had a few incidences where trucks have caught on fire because people have put flammable material or batteries into the truck. And when they get compressed, it's caused a fire. So yeah, it's really important not to put these hazardous items into um, the recycling bin. Also things like ropes can um, actually cause um, the machines to break down. So when there's things like that, that actually would, you know, cause the process to stop and then um, increase the cost because the, um, the machine has had downtime. Also, if you can imagine that if a lot of people are putting the wrong things in the bin, that's requiring more people to sort and that also increases the cost as well. And um, so we touched on Red Cycle. So Red Cycle is a program where all the soft plastics um, can be dropped at Coles and Woolworths um, and then through the Red Cycle program, then they're recycled and turned into things like um, bollards and um, play equipment. <clears throat> the reason that they can actually recycle this and the curbside bin can't is because they don't actually have the cost to separate. So by taking that cost away, it's making it viable for them to do that. It's also in pretty good condition. So when these materials get mixed with the co-mingled recycling, they often get contaminated and become quite useless, but in this program, they're still in a good condition and can be used. So we do have a quick video here. We all use plastics every day. From the packaging around our foods to the bumpers on our cars, plastic is all around us. However, we are now facing a plastic problem. In 2016, only 2% of the 78 million tonnes of plastic packaging material was recycled worldwide in a closed loop system. Considering the amount of fossil resources that have gone into the production of these plastics, they are too valuable to simply throw away. Our current use and dispose economy is unsustainable and has a devastating environmental cost. By 2025, it is expected that the ratio of plastic to fish in the ocean will be one to three. And without significant action, there may be more plastic than fish in the ocean by 2050. China, along with other export markets, are refusing problematic waste, serving as a wake-up call for the Australian waste industry. It is now more important than ever that we find innovative ways to take responsibility for our waste. But the question is, how? To combat our growing waste crisis, we must create our own sustainable system where we rethink, reduce, reuse and recycle plastics. This is called the circular economy. It ensures that plastic waste is being processed to create viable products fit for purpose. At Replas, we are world leaders in technology and the manufacturing of recycled plastic products. We do our part in reducing the amount of plastic going to landfill. Our industry partner, Red Group, has teamed up with Coles and Woolworths, along with over 54 partner organisations, including some of Australia's biggest brands, to create the Red Cycle program. This program helps to collect the most complex stream of the waste to process, post-consumer soft plastic packaging. This waste is then transformed by Replast into useful goods, such as bollards, fencing, decking, signage, and park benches for schools, councils, and governments. These products are durable, fit for purpose, and made with 98 plus percent recycled plastic. By rethinking your purchasing habits and choosing to buy recycled plastic products, you become the true recycler. We must all be more responsible if we are to drive demand for recycled products, thus creating a true circular economy. And some other things that you can't put in your um, curbside bin, but we actually still can recycle, is a lot as electronic waste. Um, so if you take, if you're a city of Bunbury resident, you can drop off these items for free, and they'll actually get broken down and recycled. So things like televisions, mobile phones, kettles, washers, dryers. Uh, we don't actually accept um, fridges, freezers, and air conditioners, basically because they've got a toxic gas. 
Um, but if you do need to dispose of these, um, they can actually be disposed of through the hard waste collection, which happens every six months, um, because the person actually collecting that waste is a qualified degasser. Um, yeah, so we actually are generally about number two in the state for recycling our electronic waste, which is pretty good seeming we're a regional council. So well done to all of our residents who are utilising the service. So instead of these items going to landfill, they're actually getting recycled and used again because things like mobile phones actually have gold in them. So it's a pretty um, valuable resource. Um, we touched on has, household hazardous waste, why it shouldn't go into our bins because it can cause fires and other um, hazards. So also if you did put these in the landfill bin, it can cause issues at the landfill with um, contamination into our um, the soil and groundwater. But again, we do accept these for free if you're a City of Bunbury resident. So that's things like batteries, um, oils, gas bottles, flares, chemicals, um, herbicides and pesticides, paints, fire extinguishers and aerosols. So there's a whole suite of things that, um, yeah, that we accept, which is very useful. So instead of putting these into landfill, they can be recycled because on average, only 3% of batteries are actually recycled in Australia that are sold. So that's quite scary to think that 97% of them are probably ending up in landfill or sitting in someone's um, drawers. So the best thing to do is, you know, have a bit of a clean out of the house and the shed, um, then drop these all off for free. And we also have our whole household recycling collection points. So these are at the admin building, the park centre, shopping centre, centre point shopping centre and the forum shopping centre. So you can drop off batteries, mobile phones, <coughs> sharps and sight and um, glasses and hearing aids. And then we have our waste bins. So these are things like if you can't get to the red cycle um, bin, you can put your soft plastics in. It's where you put all your hygiene products like nappies, um, band-aids, uh, tooth and tooth, toothpaste and toothbrushes, um, clothes and textiles that aren't in good condition, plastic toys and cling wrap, those kind of things. Uh, so once they go to landfill, they're actually never used again. So they're buried and forgotten about. So a great example of this is um, an example with the Atari game back in um, 1982. So it's going back a while, um, was when E.T. was actually released. I'm sure you guys have heard of the movie, but the game was actually developed by Atari for a Christmas release. So they really rushed it. They only had four months to produce this game. They made a million copies and they were only able to sell 250,000. So they had 750,000 copies that they weren't quite sure what to do with. Um, the game had lots of issues, it wouldn't work. It was a big flop. And yeah, they ended up with a lot of copies they didn't know what to do with. So they actually um, dumped them in a landfill in Mexico in secret. And then in 2014, so 20 years later, Microsoft actually hired an archaeologist to go back in and dig up these games and see what happened to them. You know, so this is quite a lot of time afterwards and you would expect that things would break down, but no, they hadn't. They actually found the games completely intact. So still in workable condition, still in their cardboard box and still in plastic. And they actually sold them on the market and made $100,000. <laughs> so it's pretty amazing to think what you put into landfill just is basically entombed and takes a long time to break down. So if you can actually um, look at the waste that you produce, pick the right bins for them to go into and um, yeah, try to recycle as much as possible and keep your waste as, as small as possible. Um, so over to Carmen now. For I just want to um, answer some questions. We oh, have yes, some yes. questions. <laughs> so someone asked, can greener baking paper go in Flogo? Um, greener baking paper. If it's baking paper? Yep. Yes, it can. Yep, so any baking paper. Awesome. 
Um, and someone else has said, as long as it says compostable, can it go on the photo? I'm assuming they were talking about the coffee cup there. Yeah, so you just have to look for the um, seedling logo or if it says it's compostable. Okay, so if that, and that means you can see, but you take off the lid, that'd be right. Um, if the lid, sometimes it will say compostable oh, as well. Okay, all right, cool. Right. Yeah. Yep. Some other uh, mistakes that people often make with their recycling bins is putting things like UHT containers, which are your long life milk and juice containers. Um, in 2018, we had some changes to the recycling rules and they can no longer be recycled. It does actually say on them that they can, so a lot of people get confused or want to be able to recycle it. But because they're, they're made of so many different materials, it's actually um, not viable for them to be recycled. Um, some other things that people get confused about is um, polystyrene and also aerosol cans. Unfortunately, aerosol cans are a flammable good, so um, you need to drop those off at Macomb Road. Great. Someone else has asked, the plastic on the community newspapers, do they go in the red cycle? Uh, yes, they can go yes. into the red cycle. Cool. It's actually one of the things that when we're auditing, we find a lot of people make the mistake. They just put it straight into the recycling bin. But yeah, it does need to be separated. And you can also put that newspaper into the FOGO bin as well. Um, what number triangles can go into Bunbury's recycling? Um, so for plastics, it's number one to six. I'm glad you that question. So I was like, what? <laughs> there we go. One to six. Awesome. Has anyone else got any questions? Um, what we might do is my head over to Carmen and then we can do questions at the end. So if you do have any questions as you were, as Carmen's presentation is going through and you've got any questions for Carmen or you think of something for Joe about the, the free business system, um, you can just um, pop them in the group chat and we can get Carmen or Joe to answer them at the end. So we're going to hand over to Carmen now who's going to talk about zero waste cleaning. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. Um, so today we're going to um, give you some tips on um, providing you with some tips um, to cleaning on a budget without harming the environment. Um, so basically opting for products that are made out of wood, glass or um, metal, like, um, so avoiding plastics. So what is zero waste cleaning? So zero waste cleaning or um, cleaning in a green way means um, switching to do-it-yourself natural cleaners, household repurposed items and non-plastic tools. So its aim is to reduce unreasonable waste from conventional cleaning. So why zero waste cleaning? Um, so one of the main things is avoiding toxic chemicals, like some um, of the products that you can buy at the supermarket are quite toxic and um, can harm people that have got uh, preserving the environment, so protecting our waterways, some of those nasty chemicals aren't good to be pouring down your drains. Um, probably one of the main benefits is probably the cost saving. I wish I knew about this years ago. I probably would have saved a heck of a lot of money. Um, at the moment, my um, uh, stepdaughter's in the process of buying her first home, which settles at the end of the month, and I'm actually doing up her a hamper um, with some great tools to start off with. Um, the other thing is uh, triggers and pumps. So in your spray bottles, they're actually made out of two components. They're actually made out of plastic and metal, so that unfortunately they're too hard to recycle and they need to go into your landfill bin. And some products are also classified as household hazardous waste and they can't go into any curbside bin, uh, such as aerosol cans and some of your cleaners with, that contain ammonia. Um, and they would need to be taken to our e-waste and household hazardous waste facilities. So if you can avoid um, buying products that are going to um, make you have to drop them off at certain places, then you're going to save yourself some time as well. Uh, so if you are time poor or busy, understand you might be studying full time or working full time or juggling both of those. Um, another thing you can do is actually opt for refills. So rather than buying the spray bottle with the trigger all the time. You can actually uh, buy a refill and just keep filling up that spray bottle all the time and then you're not throwing that trigger into the landfill bin. Another thing you can do is actually buy in bulk if you can afford that. As you can see here, um, buying the four litre option is only $4 a litre, whereas if you keep buying the 
um, litre option. It's going to cost you $6 a litre, so there's a big cost saving there. And it's less trips to the shops as well. <laughs> uh, so some of the products that you'll need to start off with is vinegar, bicarbonate soda, lemons. Um, essential oils are optional. They are mainly for the smells, but there are some benefits to using those as well. And another handy product is salt as well. So vinegar can be used as a fabric softener in the rinse of your washing machine. It also makes a great all-purpose cleaner. Um, if you add it to your mopping bucket with some water, it's an inexpensive, an inexpensive way to keep your floors clean. And it's also a great stain remover. And combined with baking soda, it also makes a great foaming toilet cleaner. Uh, bicarbonate soda works as a mild abrasive, so it helps um, gently clean things, it doesn't scratch or damage delicate surfaces, and it's also uh, great for removing smelly odours, like if you've got a bit of a smell in your fridge or something like that. Um, it's a good stain remover, and it also acts as a softener in your laundry as well. Uh, lemons and lemon juice act as a natural bleach, um, so when combined with the sun, they work really well as well. Uh, they're a natural degreaser and they come in handy with um, cleaning ovens and also scrubbing copper bottoms of pots and shower screens as well. Like you can just rub the half the lemon on your clear glass shower screen and it'll come up squeaky clean. Um, and salt actually acts as a mild abrasive for scrubbing. Um, so it's great for getting, getting rid of rust and mildew. And it also helps polish copper and silver. So some of the tools that you'll need if you're starting off is a squirty spray bottle. Um, you can actually get, um, if you don't want the plus cheap plastic version, you can actually get a nice glass bottle, spray bottle at some of the local businesses around town. Um, you can actually use rags or cloths rather than buying cloths all the time. Otherwise, if you do want to buy reusable cloths, we recommend that you buy something that's going to be quite sustainable and a good quality that's going to last a long time. Um, toothbrushes are an excellent tool to get into all those nicks and crannies and um, getting rid of your mould and your grout and that kind of thing. Um, this wire brush, oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, this uh, wire brush is quite popular with some of the zero waste cleaners. The brush at the top actually detaches, so when it's at the end of its life, rather than having to replace the whole brush, you can actually just replace the brush head. And the brush head is actually made out of coconut fibres and you can put it into your bogo bin. It's actually compostable. And the gloves I noticed on Friday, um, a local business in town selling these as well. Um, they're actually ethically sourced and they're compostable as well. So they can go into your bogo bin also. Uh, so one of the main cleaners that you can make, which is handy for um, cleaning out your fridge, your kitchen benches, your dining table, um, even when you're spring cleaning and cleaning out your cupboards, that kind of thing. All you need is um, a cup of boiled water that's cooled down, a cup of vinegar and half a lemon juice. And um, if you've just pop that into a squirty bottle and you can use uh, 20 drops of essential oil, uh, like a lavender, peppermint or orange oil. Um, if you've got marble or granite surfaces in your house, um, please don't use a vinegar based solution because it'll actually etch the surface. So if you do have a marble or granite surface, we recommend that you use a Castell soap surface cleaner. And with this, you just need uh, two cups of boiled water, two tablespoons of Castile soap and essential oil if you wish. Um, one lovely essential oil that you can use is eucalyptus oil. Um, there's heaps of benefits with um, using eucalyptus oil. Um, we just recommend that you please keep it away from children. It is highly toxic and it's flammable as well. Um, my nephew actually ended up in emergency from um, sipping some eucalyptus oil. So yeah, please keep, keep it high away from children. <laughs> uh, so with your sinks, baths, ovens and stove tops, you can make it really easy for yourself and 
Um, get yourself, uh, you can get yourself like um, your shakers like this fish and chip shops use, or you can just use a jar like I've done and just um, put some holes in the top. <laughs> Doesn't have to cost you anything. And you just sprinkle that in your bath or in your sinks and even your oven and your stove tops. Um, and then just squeeze it with some lemon juice or a squirty bottle of vinegar with water, so 50 parts each, and let it soak for 10 minutes. And then just um, wipe it away. I did this in my bathroom on Monday and the bath came up really white and I've always used like ethically sourced products, but it came up even nicer than that. Um, and then for stubborn areas, um, like with your um, ovens, you can actually sprinkle salt on half a lemon and actually rub it onto the glass and then it'll come up really nice as well and remove all the scum. And for really stubborn areas, if it's safe, um, maybe use some steel wool. Uh, so with a natural mole killer, um, you can, in a squeezy bottle, just put 500 mils of water. Oh, wait a minute, sorry. Uh, first of all, um, in a bucket, you just add a tablespoon of bicarb soda and half a cup of white vinegar. And you just wipe that all over the surface and then wash it off. And then any places where there's mold, if you just put in a squeezy bottle, um, half a cup of white vinegar and a quarter of a teaspoon of clove bud oil, um, apparently that's really good for removing mold and um, just leave that for um, you can leave that for 24 hours and it should come up nice and clean. Um, with a toilet cleaner, it can be as simple as just sprinkling some bicarb soda in there. Um, and then you can spray it with some vinegar or lemon juice and leave it for 10 minutes and wipe it down for a nice, perfect clean bowl. Or if you've got boys like me and it can get a bit gross at times, um, you can make these really cool natural toilet fizz bombs. Um, and you just get it, get yourself a bowl um, and you just need a cup of bicarbonate soda, a third of a cup of citric acid, and then you add two cups of eucalyptus oil and just give it a bit of a stir and then about 40 to 60 drops of peppermint or lemon oil if you've got it. Um, and once it starts sticking together, then you can put it into an ice tray. Um, I recommend that you use a silicon ice tray, not a hard plastic one like I did the first time. I had difficulty trying to get them out, so make sure it's a silicon one. Um, and then just pop it into your fridge and let it set overnight, and then you can pop them out and store them in a nice glass jar or something, and just make sure you keep these out of the reach of children as well. Uh, so with a glass cleaner, um, it can be as simple as just using, in a squeezy bottle, just um, spraying with um, eucalyptus oil and then wiping it over with newspaper. Um, otherwise, you can um, make up a glass cleaner in a, a, pump and a squeezy bottle. <laughs> so um, one cup of water with half a cup of vinegar and a quarter of a cup of lemon juice and then just wipe it over with a nice dry cloth. Uh, if you're having problems with like your shower heads and your taps and they're getting quite grimy, you can um, make yourself a really simple descaler. So it's just a matter of um, soaking a rag um, with pure lemon juice and you just wrap it around the taps or the shower head and leave it for a couple of hours and then give it a scrub and it should come up nice and clean. And you might find with your kettle, if you're using tap water, they can get quite dirty after a while. Um, so what you need to do is just fill it three quarters full, half parts water and half parts vinegar, bring it to the boil, then let it cool, drain the water and rinse it several times and boil again so that you've got no aftertaste and it'll come up beautiful and clean. Um, you would have found, um, before COVID-19 that you couldn't buy yourself hand sanitizer. Um, please do your research and check whether this is 100% safe, um, but you can make yourself like a little hand sanitizer, one of these little squeezy things. <laughs> um, and all you need is a tablespoon of aloe vera, um, some witch hazel and essential oil. Um, we recommend um, tea tree, lavender, lemon, orange, eucalyptus or rosemary because they are actually antiseptic, antiviral and 
antibacterial and then just fill it the rest with water. So what cleaning items go where? So you would have heard Joe before recommend that um, cardboard products like your baking soda go into the organics bin. Um, we do find out on the streets, a lot of um, recycling bins have got paper towel and tissue, but they actually need to go into your FOGO bin as well. Um, with the citric acid, this is actually made of three components. So it's actually got a plastic lid, cardboard and metal. Um, so the cardboard could go into your FOGO bin if you're feeling a bit pedantic and want to pull it all apart. Otherwise, it needs to go into your landfill bin. <laughs> um, and glass bottles, jars and lids. The lids are actually magnetic. Um, and they've got magnets at the MRF in Perth, so they can go into your recycling bin as well. And um, your bottles, there's plastic bottles, codes one to six. And then obviously your soft plastic should triggers and pumps and old gloves and rags need to go into the landfill bin as well. Uh, so we have done you up a My Three Bins cleaning guide today as well, as well as we can send you all the recipes if you wish. And then the Youth Advisory Council has also done up some awesome tips on reusables. Um, so reusables can be used again and again to help you reduce the amount of single use items that have wasted. So these are great to put together when you're out and about and they talk about um, things that you can use in your home without having to buy or things that are great to invest in. Just check out their website. Um, and then there's a make your own low waste kit, like you're um, putting together like a reusable shopping bags, uh, a reusable water bottle, your cutlery, and you can like wrap it in a nice paper uh, material napkin and taking your own food containers out and about and a cup. Um, other things that you can do to reduce waste is um, fill up your own containers or bags at your local butchers, your local farmer's market or bulk, bulk full food stores and bakeries. Um, and we just recommend that you opt for reusable and compostable products and say no to avoiding single use products. And then they've all, uh, Yak have also done up some tips for looking after yourself and the planet and low waste matters tips. And they've also done an excellent challenge, which is quite timely with Plastic Free July coming up in July. And one of the challenges is actually cut up an old textile to use as a recycling cloth. And then you can also set yourself some low waste goals as well. So setting yourself three. Then the other thing that we just need to mention is, um, if you haven't already done so, is to download um, the My Three Bins Bunbury app. It's actually free and you can download it on Google Play or your iTunes. Your iPhone, is it? Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's got a, a, it can send you notifications when to put your bin out, what bin to put out. Um, it's got a comprehensive A to Z index. So if you're not sure of an item, you can just look it up and it'll tell you where it needs to go. It's got an excellent near, a near me function. So it'll tell you where you need to take your batteries, your mobile phones and hazardous waste. And it's also got a list of all the responsible cafes around town as well that um, will accept your reusable cup and give you a discount. Um, and that's it. We'll leave it over to question time. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So you guys need to stay there because we'll probably have some questions. Um, just so everyone knows, the resources that um, Joe or Carmen have mentioned today will email out tomorrow. So um, that will kind of be in your inbox um, around midday tomorrow along with a survey so you guys can tell us how we can improve on our sessions and things like that. So don't be worried if you didn't capture some of the stuff that they went through or couldn't quite see the screen, we will be sending it out tomorrow. And there will be a recording available as well so that you can um, listen to it all again if you so wish. Um, but if there are any resources that you feel are missed or you didn't get um, or you want more information, you can also contact us and um, we can put in touch with these ladies who can I'm sure we'll be more than happy to help you guys out. Um, there was a question that comes through, which is, is the Earth brand a good Earth-friendly product or is that just a... Mm. <laughs> it's probably something we need to do some research on. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, 
happening. Yeah. <laughs> I think, yeah, I think this, this particular workshop is more about, you know, from scratch rather than yeah. tweaking the yeah. products. So they wouldn't want to be raised. No. So. <laughs> but thank you for that question. Is there any other questions that um, people have? Someone's just asked, they live in the Shire of Harvey. Is the My Three Bins app um, relevant? relevant for them? Yes, you can download it as a visitor and you'll still get the information like the A to Z guide and um, what you can and can't put in your bins. It awesome. should be the same across the Perfect. different councils. Wonderful. Someone just asked if the cleaning recipes can be sent. Yes, we have yes. got those. They'll yep. be um, coming out in the email tomorrow. Yeah, we've done up a PDF for you. Yep, so they will, you will be having a present tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> Has anyone else got any questions? I might just check. Yeah, but if you've ever got any questions, feel free to email us and give us a call. We're always here to help. Is there anyone in the council I can talk to about textile waste? What's the specific question? Hi, how are you going? Hi. <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, I'm just hearing a lot from the, the waste-free other websites up in Perth that um, so many of our textiles that are donated to Vinnie's and all the other places are being put in landfill. Um, is there anything being recycled or used apart from them getting sent to other op shops at the moment? I think what happens is they get a lot of um, materials that are not in great condition. So if it's say, a yep. jacket, like they actually don't get washed, so if you're no. donating um, to make sure that they're in a good condition so that they can be put on the shelves and then sold. So if it's yeah. a jacket missing a couple of buttons or if it has a hole in it, it will go to landfill because um, basically I don't think anyone would actually want to buy it. So yeah. if you do put things in good condition that you know someone would actually purchase, then it is likely it will still get recycled. And okay. And used. I'm just hearing that even the local op shop here is just saying that yeah, so many, so many donations are just literally getting thrown out because people don't wash their clothes properly. Yeah, uh, we have spoken with um, some of them, and it, yeah, it's quite shocking. Some of the donations that they do get, they're just in such poor quality condition. That and then that's an actual added cost to their business because they then have to where the cost of sending them to landfill. Yes, yep. And just one other question, um, just with the, all the, the lids that you get on the, um, on the, you know, bottles and that, are you working in with Green Batch? Or is that something that you've thought about or? And we have thought about it. However, at the moment, it's only in the regions targeted at schools. So uh, I do believe that if you do have a child going to a certain school that you can, and they are part of the Green Batch program, you can drop off lids that way. But as a community program, um, I do think you can still drop them off at the Stanley Road tip. Yeah, they have a sea container at the tip at Stanley Road, um, and they collect lids for plastic codes two, four, and five, and that gets sent to Precious Plastics in Margaret River. Oh, okay. So which is similar to Green Batch? Is it? And um, they're made into um, pot plants, pot plants mm. at Precious Plastics. Okay. So numbers two, four, and five. And five. Yeah. Must and that's at the Stanley Road. Um, another thing is um, some of the bottles, particularly I think it's iced coffee and different brands, they have that white plastic um, ring underneath. Yeah, yeah. So that needs to be yes. removed as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. We did okay. find when we were collecting them, um, most of the time that was actually left on. So that's then um, a task that someone actually has to do and that increases the cost of having to recycle it. Thanks for that question, Ali. Um, we had another question, can cotton shirts go in the FOGO bin? Unfortunately not, they don't accept any textiles in the FOGO. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of the time um, they could be made, like they could be made from cotton and other materials or even just leaving buttons. Or zippers on the material. So it's a blanket roll, no um, textiles. Great. Well, that looks like they're all the questions that are coming through. But like I said, like we said, if we do have any that you think of overnight or 
um, tomorrow and you, you really would like the girls to answer it, feel free to touch base with us. Um, we'll put some contact details in that email tomorrow so that you guys can get in touch with us and ask us any questions um, if you think of them. So thank you all so much for attending. Um, we really appreciate you guys coming along. Big thank you to these two lovely ladies for hosting the session tonight. Uh, wouldn't be possible without these guys. So we hope to see you guys at potentially some more life hacks programs in the next few weeks. So um, yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank you for having us. See you later.